uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you all for coming. Uh, this is the first Light Client Summit here at DevConnect. Uh, I believe this is being live streamed right now. There's a link, uh, at least on our Twitter page, and I think the Telegram too. Um, yeah, so I'll give a short little overview of kind of why we're here, what we're trying to do today. And yeah, we'll get started. Uh, so yeah, first welcome. Uh, there's a group of us, we'll call ourselves Ethereum Light Clients, and uh, we've been working on this summit. Uh, if this goes well, it's something we should probably keep doing. Uh, a lot of the people here are very interested in this part of the space, uh, but sometimes it's hard to prioritize along with everything else going on. So, uh, you know, a lot of the point of today was to get us all in one place and talk about different topics, research, things like that. Um, also, yeah, why not get together uh, today in Amsterdam? So, yeah, I mean, the structure of today should be some kind of summit for research and development. Uh, we'll have a series of talks in the morning starting now. Uh, there'll be like coffee breaks. Hopefully it feels like a fairly relaxed schedule. Shouldn't be too intense or anything. Um, we'll, we should have lunch catered sometime around 12.30. And I think we'll have one talk in the afternoon just with scheduling. Uh, but then after that, the point or the idea is to have uh, more loosely structured working groups. We could break up into like smaller things and hopefully from the talks in the morning, you're like, oh, I want to talk to this person about that or, you know, brainstorm ideas on how to like move the state of these specs forward or, you know, this implementation technique. Uh, and we'll have time later in the day to do things like that. Uh, first, I want to say thanks. Uh, a lot of people have been helping uh, organize all this. Shout out to Phil and Terrence in particular. Uh, Chainsafe, the company's been supportive as well. Um, of course, all the speakers today and the volunteers, thank you for helping with ticketing and stuff. And of course, the production team, uh, both uh, you, know, uh, you know, people at the EF who've been helping with uh, DevConnect and then also the actual production team here on the ground. So yeah, what is a light client? Most of you probably know, um, and essentially it's you know a blockchain client, right? So it's the software that runs and like keeps track of the chain, uh, but it makes some trade-offs in between uh, essentially security and how many resources it needs to operate. So you know when you think of like running a node, when people say that they usually mean running a full node, um, and these you know traditionally would validate the full chain, and uh, as you probably are all aware, that can take a lot of resources. Um, we are looking the past couple of days at like, for example, Geth is a very common uh, full node implementation and you know, a freshly synced node is gonna take 500 gigabytes, um, which is a lot, right? Especially if you wanna think about use cases like running a client on your phone, you might not necessarily have that much storage just lying around. Um, right, and again, the point here is like to get blockchain clients into more places, uh, all sorts of environments you can think of, phones, browsers, uh, IoT devices, right? So even like super low powered use cases like this, even smart contracts. So uh, you know this this idea of a light client even goes all the way back to like the Bitcoin white paper where they had SPV. Uh, I think it was like simplified payment verification, but essentially you could get these like Merkle proofs about if your UTXO had been spent or not. Uh, obviously, this concept has gotten into other parts of the ecosystem. For example, Ethereum, right? And historically, we've had uh, the LAS sub protocol. So this is part of the Ethereum networking stack and it facilitates this like light, uh, light client architecture. Um, it generally has this like client server model. I think you'll hear a bit more about it in the next talk. Um, the idea is essentially you can sync block headers and then there are various commitments to the chain state in these headers, right? The state root, uh, receipt roots, transaction roots, all these things. And again, you can get these proofs about what happened at a certain block, certain point in time. Uh, and that can be authenticated in this protocol. Uh, you know, fast forward a little bit though, and so now we have this move to proof of stake with the merge. Again, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. And uh, a sort of key design goal here was to design the new consensus protocol we have with proof of stake uh, and have it be like client friendly. So what that looks like in practice is that we now have validators on this proof of stake network. Uh, Validators are sampled to do different things on the network. And one thing we can have them do is sample committees to basically sign over blocks. And uh, we 
sample a very small number, and this is the number that then is used to produce these like light client. Uh, you'll probably hear sync committees throughout the day. This is what we mean is a sampling, a very small number of the broader validator set uh, who signs over blocks, and then light clients then can then sample the signatures from these committees to figure out what they claim the chain, the chain is. Uh, there's a cool thing where basically they rotate and the period's about once a day. Um, what this means is as a light client, you can basically just like log on once a day, get the latest updates, and progress without doing much more. And the point here is to have like a very efficient sync mechanism uh, compared to say downloading like every header or something like this in previous light client designs. So you can sync the chain, right? But then it's just like you have honestly a bunch of hashes and you're like, cool, well, what do I do with that? Um, and the point now is to say, okay, I want to like learn things about the chain. And now you say, okay, I have these commitments. I like end up with these like, uh, these things, I have some like cryptoeconomic security around, and then I can like request proofs around these things. Um, the cool bit with Beacon Chain Light clients that we're building is that uh, they can leverage this SSZ scheme that we have, Simple Serialize, and it provides serialization and merkleization sort of out of the box. Um, and so then you have ways to say, okay, I want to know about some aspect of the chain um, at this point in time, and there's sort of a streamlined way to do that. Uh, I believe you'll see a lot more of this later with various demos that you'll see. Uh, yeah, there's this concept of multi-proofs. So basically, rather than say, hey, I want to know, uh, you know who is a validator at this point in time, you could ask for like many validators. And you could mer basically merge the request, merge back the responses, um, yeah, and efficiently query the chain. So you're like, OK, maybe this sounds interesting. Uh, and that's cool, but like, why do we care? <laughs> and I think that's probably why we're all here is that uh, I think it's, you know, I think we'd probably all agree that it's very core to like sort of the ethos for like the full vision here, right? That like we have more than just full nodes, especially if we, you know, move to a world where full nodes, full nodes become increasingly expensive to run, it makes it harder and harder for end users to run them. This is bad because if it's harder, fewer people will do it. And so you have fewer people actually sort of participate in the network. And that makes the network less robust, more fragile, all of these things. Um, the point, for example, with light clients is you now have a way to contribute in your own way. And moreover, you can say, OK, I, I will minimize my reliance on trusted intermediaries, right? And that gives you more control of your data, your assets, your whole view of the network, these things. I love this link here. Uh, if you guys know Moxie Marlin Spike, if you like use Signal, he's the guy who is involved with that. And uh, he basically had this article in January that was like, he's like, okay, I'm gonna like check out this Web3 thing. I'm like gonna make some NFTs. And then he had this like whole article being like, yeah, this is like uh, very silly. He was not impressed. <laughs> and uh, you know, some of his critiques were more just around like UX and things that like I think we can improve. Some of them are more fundamental, where it's like, okay, yeah, what I do is I'm trying to like interact with the chain, and I go immediately to like to infura.com, right, or IO, whatever the website is, and this is the place where it's like we can improve the state of things with light clients, where rather than have to like go through again these trusted intermediaries, we uh, can essentially interact with the chain on our own terms. So if you want to join the discourse, you can check that out. And there's lots of cool applications, right? So like I think an exciting bit, hopefully that will come out of today, is like you'll get a sense of the fact that like uh, this is a sort of different point in the design space. A lot's possible. And like what's really cool is I keep hearing about even more applications that people are working on or building, and like it just seems like there's just you know this whole whole world of of new things that unlocks. Um, some examples would be like mobile wallets, right? So like you could imagine rather than having to go to Infura or something like this. Uh, you have a like client on your phone interacting with the chain. There's also things like smart contract bridges. So you basically put a like client actually as a smart contract on chain. And then you can do things like have trust minimized bridges. Um, and that's a whole different topic, but uh, it's super cool stuff. And another reason we care again is like e ecosystem security. So uh, the, the network is more resilient the more people are using it, especially in different ways. It, like, you not only want many different, like, you don't want just quantity of nodes, but also different types of nodes. And you should imagine this like spectrum or like a zoo of different 
types of participants and actors, and they all sort of add an aggregate to like a much more resilient network. So what's on the horizon, just to give you like uh, a very high level overview into like some of the like research areas that I'm aware of, perhaps we'll hear more later today. Um, the first one is like, how can we harden or improve the like client security model? Um, I Again, I think we'll see, we'll go into much more detail later, but essentially um, the like client protocol we have for at least the beacon chain today relies on an honest majority of the sync committee I mentioned. And so the question is like, okay, can we do better than honest majority? Um, there's different ways to think about this. You could have like slashing. There's like a minimum use of slashing right now. You could have like fraud proofs. So like if one like client detects something silly, they could like gossip this alert to like their peers. There's a design space there. Uh, data availability sampling, and I'm sure there's more we can think of. This next one I called like the gateway problem. So essentially, um, it's something we've seen empirically with LES deployments where you have light clients, and especially if they have this client server architecture, you need light servers. Uh, historically, what we've seen is not many people run light servers on the network. And what that means is that if, well, first off, it's just hard to find them. So if I run a light client, like if I run LES, it's like, it almost seems like it doesn't work because it's really hard to find people who can give me the data in the first place. And then the nodes that do exist, they are like overloaded with all the requests, right? So generally, we want to think about how can we change that. Um, and I think, again, at a high level, the solution looks something like more sophisticated networking to essentially move the load. Um, rather than have like a client server model, you could think of like a gossip, more of a peer-to-peer -peer model. I think we'll hear more about that later today in some of the talks. Uh, there's an open question of like incentivization. So like this also kind of helps with this like question of load. Like you could imagine like clients perhaps paying per request, per so many requests. There again, there's a whole, whole uh, design space here. Uh, some other things is like, okay, so like clients can sync the chain, uh, but then they want to like interact with the chain. And uh, I think what we uh, feel comfortable with is like this notion of like, okay, I want to ask about some chain state at a point in time. I can get a proof that authenticates some data that I ask about. But then the question is like, okay, what if I want to do more than just read the chain? Or what if I want to get some data, maybe do like some small computation on it, and then like do something with the results, right? So like for example, I want to like, I don't know, maybe I want to like get like an LP position on Uniswap and then like derive some information that helps me change, you know, my positioning in some something, some Uniswap pool. Um, so you can imagine actually having like almost like a state channel where like clients then like, you know, not only are sort of asking for like telling me the answer to like this part of the chain, but also say, okay, uh, also run this computation. And then we could use things like, yeah, state channels, you know, involving fraud proofs and things like this um, to have this like authenticated computation game. A really cool area is zero knowledge proofs. Uh, we actually tried to get someone to like talk about this today, but it didn't work out unfortunately. But uh, if you're familiar with like Celo, they have their Plumo ultralight client. Um, and basically what they do is, um, so I mentioned a second ago that with this proof of stake light client, we have these like groups of validators on these committees and they rotate. So uh, what you can do, or at least what, what Plumo does, is instead of needing the light client to sync every rotation, they basically just have a snark that goes over, I think it's a fixed number, but many, many, many rotations, and you end up where, rather than syncing even once a day, you can sync large amount of history, uh, you know, really, really simply. And obviously this could like uh, apply to the Ethereum protocol as well. So cool stuff there. If you like zero knowledge proofs, CK snarks, things like this, I'd encourage you to look further into it. And like finally adoption. So like obviously we want people to use this stuff. Like the whole point again is to like put more power into more users' hands. I think hopefully we all agree or you will by the end of the day that like lag clients are a way to do that. Uh, one like high level directive I would give all of you today is like think about how can we, you know, replace Infura. At least reduce our reliance on them. And yeah, just to zoom back into today, uh, you can, you'll learn hopefully from the builders in this space. Uh, there should be like a fun set of talks in the next couple hours. There should be some fun demos. And yeah, learn about the latest research and development. 
in the afternoon. We'll have the working groups I mentioned, and that should be that. Yep, that's all I have. <laughs>